welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad to have everyone here with us this evening. Yes, come on back, everyone. We would love to see everyone on screen if you would like. If not, thank you for your presence. I am not Anway. <laughs> Unfortunately, she is away uh, with a family emergency. So I am stepping in this evening to be your lovely moderator. <laughs> and lucky for you all, I have plenty of experience talking to people. <laughs> so this evening, uh, I am Andrea Spearman. I am the Associate Programs and Community Engagement Manager of World Arts West. She, her pronouns. And this is the Career Pathways Roundtable. And this evening, we're gonna be talking about nonprofit boards. And before we go any further, we wanna have a land acknowledgement. World Arts West acknowledges that we occupy the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramatusha Ohlone peoples, who are the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula. We recognize that the people understand the interconnectedness of all things and have maintained a harmony with nature for millennia. We honor the Ramatush Ohlone peoples for their enduring commitment to Mother Earth and as the indigenous protectors of this land and in accordance with their traditions, they have never ceded, lost, nor forgotten their responsibilities as the caretakers of this place as well as all peoples who reside in their traditional ter territory. <clears throat> we recognize that we benefit from living and working on their traditional homeland. And as uninvited guests, we affirm their sovereign rights as first peoples and wish to pay our respects to the ancestors, elders, relatives, and current members of the Ramatish commun community. We respectfully honor these peoples and we embrace and collaborate meaningfully to record and witness indigenous knowledge and in how we care for San Francisco and all its peoples. We are so excited to present these wonderful, badass women who are working in community in the nonprofit world, in the arts world, kicking butt, taking names. <laughs> we are recording this session just so you all know so you can watch back later <laughs> and also so your questions and answers can be recorded the career pathways roundtable started in 2022 to connect cultural artists with different careers supporting the cultural arts sector and we've presented other panels that acknowledge arts administration production philanthropy and earlier this year, back in March, uh, we acknowledged arts commissions that are in cities and counties throughout the Bay Area and you know, nationally at large in other states and cities. And we're bringing folks who have the expertise, they have the knowledge, not only of being in these different pathways beyond performance, but working knowledge in general of the cultural arts sector, of the arts sector, the dance sector, the music sector, and they're bringing their knowledge this evening. I would love for each of you to go around and introduce yourselves briefly. Let's start with Tamara. Hey, everyone. Um, good evening. I'm here in downtown San Jose on unceded Mawekma Ohlone territories. Uh, really pleased to be here. My name is Tamara Mosawani Alvarado. I'm a co-founder and um, co-leader of Calpuli Ocelo Siwat in downtown, in Eastside San Jose. Um, so I'm a traditional Aztec dancer and have been for many years, few decades. Um, and in terms of the, the topic, uh, yeah, I've been an arts administrator. I've led organizations like the Plaza and Makla. And I've been on um, a few boards, you know, like the National Performance Network, Western State Arts Federation. I'm on my uh, local arts council with Silicon Valley Creates. And a sort of like an arts and culture adjacent type of board, Convention and Visitors Bureau Team San Jose. So that's me being brief. Yes. Nadi, take it away. Okay, brief. Uh, my name is Nadi Thekic. I am uh, the director of Nava Dance Theater, an Indian dance, Varadhanatyam, an experimental movement and live music company that creates work, has been creating work for the last 12 years here. 
I also co-facilitate the Unrehearsed Artist Residency Program for South Asian Movement Artists. I'm on the board for the Western Arts Alliance, and I'm so excited to be here as a part of this event because I've been going to Ethnic Dance Festival, like many of us here, forever since we were children. Okay, so I love that we can support in so many different ways still. Yes. And last but never least, Laura Elaine Ellis. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. Um, I am co-founder and co-director of the Black Choreographers Festival here and now, celebrating 20 years in 2025. Um, I'm a longtime member of Dimensions Dance Theater, um, just celebrated 50 years, <laughs> Deborah Bond has, been with that company. I've been with that company since uh, 86. Um, 30 years I'm celebrating this year of being a a dance educator at Cal State University East Bay was Hayward when I started there and a school in Danville called the Athenian School. And I also love mentioning that I'm the mom of a 24 year old who's also an artist um, and game design fanatic loves the idea of game design. So um, that's me. Wonderful. Awesome. And also just a reminder to our uh, attendees this evening. We love questions. So as you have questions that come up during this discussion, please put them in the chat. We're going to chat first with all of our speakers here and then have a Q&A towards the end. If you have a burning question, please put it in the chat. Noel Campos, our uh, social media marketing manager, specialist extraordinaire, also wonderful woman. She's going to be in the chat to help you all out. Thank you, Noel. All right, let's jump right into it. What is a nonprofit board? That's what the first question people want to know. Like, what is a nonprofit board? Period. Who wants to answer first? <laughs> I'll go. Like so many. Uh, yeah, Cameron. Yeah, I'll go. Uh, awesome. Okay, so if you're a nonprofit and you got you have five hundred one c three status, it's a legal status, a legal status, not, and um, you. You have to, should have a board of directors that are responsible for the governance and fiduciary uh, responsibilities. When I started out, I didn't even understand what those words meant, especially fiduciary. Um, and so that has to do with money um, and the management of it. But it's it's a little more complex than that. But bottom line is that. And then governance is is a little more clear. It's it's the governance, how you govern as a member of the board of directors. There's usually an executive committee and what have you. There's more sort of like legal stuff to it in terms of how you report out um, to the state and federal and like there's like tax stuff and how you receive money and all of that. But for just basic 501, 501c3, um, you, you usually, you must have at least a couple board members. Some, some boards are really small and some are really big. Right. So it just depends. OK, that's it. That's basic. That's all I got. <laughs> so that's the basic line. They're managing the money. They're over oversight of the management of the money and the larger decisions of the nonprofit. And the right. organizational structure, too. They also help to maintain and govern the, the structure of the organization. Um, and they have oversight on the sustainability and strength of the organization as well in collaboration with um, if there's an ED or artistic director or both. And they they are the ones responsible for hiring and firing the executive director. That's one of the that's one of the main um, pieces. And if they're a really good board, they're also managing governing fiduciary in, in collaboration with the ED and not uh, this this is my opinion and not going around the ED. Um, but we can talk about that at the next panel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen. <laughs> That's a whole nother <laughs> topic. But yes, so these are very strict boards. They have their guidelines and protocols. Now, what separates an arts-focused nonprofit from, say, health or or dealing with youth and development and other different kinds of like educational nonprofits? What separates the arts and, and dance programming, do you all think, from your experience? That's interesting because um, often there are uh, arts programs that actually hold um, youth 
programming as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, and so there's different focus and a foci for those different ideas. And um, I, personally, I've only served for artistic boards. So I personally wouldn't know exactly the difference between a nonprofit health versus a nonprofit arts, except I have worked with arts organizations that are also very deeply rooted into uh, youth development and education. Um, and and the and the difference that I've experienced is often the the youth programs. Um, if if it's not an um, if it's not umbrellaed by that arts organization, will often have um, a smaller board, and um, mm -hmm. they will have a youth liaison and a parent liaison on those mm -hmm. boards. Um, that they're not voting members, but they show up to all of the meetings to have feedback and input. So that's one thing I know with arts education boards that I've served on. There's usually a liaison that um, that organization is serving that shows up and represents on the board. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, because there are, uh, I've seen several dance companies who have junior companies with the young people and I you know it's great to have somebody who's bridging that gap and especially when you said the, a youth themselves and a parent someone who's outside but also inside to give that insight exactly that allows us to know how we're serving on the ground not just what we think we're doing but what we're actually mm -hmm. doing and then there's leadership training that's happening for that parent liaison um, to support outreach and activities that we do. And it goes without saying probably that the youth of course is learning how to have a voice um, in this sort of um, structure. Um, and what's also powerful are the arts programs I'm talking about serve um, young people of color. So we're already beginning to train up the next generation of young artists that are, um, you know, black. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, that kind of leads into my next question because you mentioned, you know, specifically for those folks who have companies, nonprofits, work that they're doing that involves the youth, they have like, you want to have a youth liaison. Who else should be on a board? Like, how do you create this board? Who are you looking for to be a part of it? I jump in. Um, I have less experience with the youth, except teaching them sometimes, but in terms of board <laughs> representation. And I have yeah. some youths, I have my own youths also, three of them. Um, and uh, I think it, it's so interesting in, in, in NAVA, in our own company, the, the board, it really, there's the vision of the artistic director and then, um, and sort of that uh, oversight for sure. But I feel like it's, it's very much a team effort in terms of what happens, uh, but in the Western Arts Alliance, which is more of like a, it's like a booking and touring agency and it's a membership-based organization. And so the board really represents all the folks that the organization serves. So that's artists, mm. agents, presenters, independent producers, consultants. And so that way there's a voice of sort of each of those entities that has a say in the vision or strategic plan or the executive director or, or you know uh, um or the budget you know that goes into the that goes into planning so um and then and in that organization in western arts alliance i feel like it's more obvious the organizational structures that are put into place to serve each of those different folks who benefit from the organization um so i think there's and we're we're recruiting board members right now actually we're not you know in case anyone's interested but um there's always like i'm one of the few artists in the room and that's it's it's mm. tough and and it's like i'm i'm always looking at who's an artist who's really wanting to be represented in that space because um there's so few of us in in those spaces um, but that's just one example yeah and you know speaking of representation for each of you do you feel that you are one of the first as women of color to be on some of these boards? What does the makeup of boards, you know, look like in its kind of historical context, specifically for the ones you all were on, were and are on? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I think that, you know, so much depends on what region you're in, you know, what sector you're in. Um, there's, I've been on boards that have been non-arts based um, where I'm the only artist um, and that perspective is really valuable because we just think differently. And even within our own sector, we think differently, right? A visual artist thinks differently from a dancer, et cetera. So I just want to just put that out there that our perspective is really valuable. Um, and most of the time, especially in the Bay, we have to have multiple perspectives because we have to make a living in different ways, right? So there's that. That's kind of an editorial, I guess. Um, and yeah, it's true. Even in, you know, in this day and age and continuing forward, we will still continue to be the first ones in different spaces. Um, you know, For example, the Western State Arts Federation, um, the just the term federation tells you how old it is it's turning 50 this year um which yes nothing wrong with turning 50 um and uh yeah i was the first person of color to be the chair of this really important regional arts organization um and i had shared earlier with my colleagues that what because of the structure of the board and the bylaws I was able to, upon becoming chair, appoint my vice chair. And the way that worked was that the vice chair would eventually become chair. So I, appoint, I appointed an extremely talented um, colleague of mine, Taniqua Broughton, out of Arizona, who runs the state of uh, Black Arizona, by the way, and appointed her. And she is the first Black woman, uh, first Black person to chair that organization. And so the representation piece here uh, is so critical that you might find yourself thinking like, how could, does it make sense? Like I'm an artist, you know, I'm trying to run my company. I'm trying to do my work, do all the stuff. And we go do some more free labor. We'll get into that later. <laughs> yes. Agree. That's really what needs to be said because, you know, you are, you know, encompassing Sankofa. You're moving forward, looking back, reaching, bringing somebody with you, as you said, and, and that person ends up being the first that's what we need more first so there can be less first. Laura, did you want to add to that? It was so well said. I would have <laughs> to say, um, did you want to know whether I, I was the first um, Black woman to serve as chair for the organizations that I served um, as chair? Did What was the experience like? Um, well, I wasn't the only person of color in the room. So I have, or around the table, I should say. So I would say that um, the organizations, and and I think that was probably um, on purpose with my choice of the organization I, I'm serving, mm. served on and do serve, um, that I, those were spaces where I was not the only person of color and not the only black person either. But was the first black woman to serve as, as chair. And so, um, and usually one of a few artists in the room too. But again, these were grassroots arts organizations. So I think that that is not unusual in just the the sphere that I that I that I walk in, in the ecology um, and what's important to me as far as service, right? So there's that part where, you you need to be passionate and have an understanding, I think, on some level. It doesn't have to be necessarily deep understanding because you, you learn more as you serve an organization. Mm -hmm. But it should be a place that you feel um, one aligns with, this is me personally, aligns with who you are as a person and an artist, um, and that you do believe in what it is they're doing in community because you work really hard. <laughs> service. So you want to be working towards something that um, you believe in and that you feel your presence will help to improve that organization, uh, make things better for that organization. Yeah, just, just jump in on, on something that I think is important as artists. Um, let's say you're a BIPOC artist. Let's say you're not a BIPOC artist, but you're an artist. Let's say somebody talks to you about joining this board, I like the rule of three. So I'd like to push people when they're like, can you join this board? And I'd say, who are the other two people that are gonna join this board with me? 
So let's just say in the case of artists, right? There's an organization, they're like, they need to check the box. They need to get an artist, right? And you're like, how about three of us, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm what I'm, what I'm talking about is tokenism, right? And mm -hmm. that's something that I've also done in boards to say, oh, you, you need a person of color. Okay, well, how about three of us? There needs to be a slate or else I'm not joining. Okay, Ooh, next. Okay, come on, push back. I love it. I'm here uh, for it. Tamara is absolutely right. Like you, um, the organizations that you serve, with, if you have a goal as an individual and an artist, you wanna make sure that you are in a room that um, aligns with with your, you know, your beliefs and, and your goals. Um, and of course, I mean, there are those spaces where you're like, I have an opportunity to shift the paradigm and, and to make things better overall. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely fabulous. Um, and I think that um, the places where I served that also happened, but I also knew I needed to be in a space that I could be visible, respected, um, heard, and that I was um, serving an organization that's serving community in the way I would like to see community be. Yes. Ooh, the way I would like to see community be. Yes. And a question I have for all of you is, as cultural artists, what skills did you bring to your boards? Because we know y'all have many multifaceted skills. Which ones specifically do you feel like you're bringing from artist into administrative board. <laughs> so many. I mean, I just feel like the, the just the reality on the ground of what's happening with artists, like cost of living. You know, I mean, like it's like remember we have to pay for th artists have to pay for things. They do a lot of free work, like. We have to pay that, you know, it, it, and it's just like, I feel like we just have to keep saying this over and over again. It's like by the time we catch up with ourselves from five years ago, the inflation has already taken over and like we need to. So it, it feel like it's a constant um, reminder of like things cost a lot. And if you want artists in the room for anything, whether it's a board or like a show or, you know, any like that, that the budget needs to increase <laughs> That's it, um, for them. And I would say the other thing is especially if you're one of the few women or one of the few people of color, it's like reminding folks that that's a thing. Like mm -hmm. just reminding people like, Oh, do you, why don't we nominate a woman for this award? Oh, what, right. Great. Idea. You know, it, and it's no one, no one's intentionally like doing like really bad thing. You know, it's, it's, it's always just like, that's why representation is important. So that you can say like, there's, we've, we don't have any women on this you know, awards that we've nominated or we have, you know, um, and just just being OK with like saying it when you're on a board, just saying, like, I'm uncomfortable with this. I'm just putting it out there because it doesn't align with why I'm here and the vision of this organization. Like, just say it. And then it's up to executive leadership to take that and, and you know, make sure that's rectified. So and I, and I think um, really appreciate like folks like Tamara and Laura, who've been on boards for a long time, because I look up to those women, specifically women in the board that I'm in and see how they are. And I'm like, oh, I want to make sure that my voice is heard and and sort of like don't apologize for that, um, that experience that you bring, because no one else in the on the board will have that, you know, and that's why you're here. Yes. Advocacy, visibility. I love I love that. I love that. I think one of the critical skills we bring as artists to these boards are that we're naturally we're organizers, mm. right? And um, sometimes people go like, well, what do you do? You know, you read the board packet and then you go to the, the meeting and you're like, so moved. <laughs> All those in favor, right? Um, yes, I used to have a little, I used to have a little gavel. I'd be like <clears throat> calling the meeting to order, right? So we're organizers. We organize all day, every day. I know after this call, we're all going to get back to it and keep on organizing for that next gig, the next class, the next, all the things, right? Or maybe get on our spreadsheets and be like, minus, plus, minus, um, do all that. So we bring organizing skills and that perspective as organizers. Um, let's say that you're on a board, whether it's arts or not, and there's some sort of something going on in your city, right? And your board has a perspective on that policy, 
that your city's trying to put together, the organizers, we're the organizers. So we might be the ones to say, well, this is what we need to do, right? We're going to need a speaker. We're going to need somebody who write this up, somebody who's going to make the calls, somebody who's going to send the emails or do, you know what I mean? So that organizing spirit, um, I think is important. And I'll, and I'll just add to that. We're problem solvers and we're creative thinkers. So we often bring to the table those ideas that, um, that maybe folks haven't considered before. And, um, and we find um, really great solutions and we ask really great questions. Um, and that really helps to, uh, get folks around the table to focus and to really be mindful about uh, the things they're thinking about and choices that they're making. Yes, yes. Can I add one smaller? Yes, yes. Um, that if you're an artist or have a company that is looking for board members, those are the people you look for. The people that like are smarter than you, cooler, or more creative than you, or like can meet you where you're at because like those are the people that are gonna create the vision for your organization too and, and help you do that. I think I just wanna note that as well because we all, I, I know all the benefits that artists bring <laughs> to organizations, but also it's like finding folks, they can be other artists that are joining your board. They can be um, really funny, but the, like that's what you look for too when you recruit board members for your own organizations, okay. Absolutely. And, you know, I want to go back to what Tamara said about her pulling someone along and lifting them up. What has been the pathway to board leadership? Because, you you know, you've been recruited, you're invited in, you're in there listening to all the things. How do you go from being regular member there to board chair or chair of a subcommittee? Typically, there are um, roles that are on board. So there's secretary, there's treasurer, there's um, sometimes there's a vice chair or a vice president. Um, and I typically um, would do secretary. Um, I tended to drift towards being a secretary. And that for both um, organizations or two of the organizations that I served as chair, I was secretary and then chair. Um, that was my pathway. Mm -hmm. Similar for you, Tamara? Yeah, definitely. Um, secretary is a really good pathway, I think, because you might, um, initially you might think that's not what I want to do. Right. But you hold the power. You have to sign certain things that only the secretary can sign. Ooh. So you'll get to be like, oh, they need me. And those things that you need to sign sometimes, it might be like, I don't know, I'm making things up, right? Like it might be a contract from like the city that the organization got and they need the secretary to sign it um, and you get to read it. So that's your opportunity to just educate yourself a little bit more and say, I'm not signing anything that I don't read, right? So we're going to do that. Um, then there's like committees. Sometimes I throw myself into like the audit committee, which I kind of hate to do, <laughs> but it's it, this is what you need to do on these boards. It's like, throw yourself into something that you're like, oh, no, 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 I would hate to do that. That's the thing you need to do. Because even if you don't stay on the audit committee forever and ever, you need to be well-rounded on the board and at least get in that audit committee one year and understand what does that mean? Maybe it's just a CPA review. Maybe it's just a finance committee. Maybe this board is really small and it's like Excel spreadsheets. That's okay. That's okay. My first, very first board, I did not understand these profit and loss statements. Nobody ever taught me. I didn't grow up with that, right? And I just knew that at the end, at this little bitty dance company that I was on, I said, it says minus. Is this a problem? <laughs> so anyways, that's a longer story. <laughs> no worries. And we all chatted prior to this evening. And I know that Nadi said her piece about not necessarily wanting to move up the ranks. Yeah. Could you explain just a little bit more? Yeah, I can explain. Um, we, our board is amazing. I think there's like 12 people, more than that. Um, and uh, and a lot of committees, a lot of opportunities to serve in a more leadership role outside of the executive 
committee, which is really nice. Um, and I've loved those roles. I think I was the co-chair of the hyphen a hyphen plus Asian committee. And we, we did like a beautiful pre-conference symposium and we had all these artists and presenters and it was a wonderful event. And I love serving on that committee. Um, and, uh, the opportunity comes up for executive leadership and I have politely said not this year for a couple of years. And, um, and it's it is a lot of work and as artists a lot of our work is not compensated in other other spheres and i totally know this is a service that i am choosing to do but i also know my capacity and and i want to be able to serve wholeheartedly and fully to the best of my ability and like timing and i know that taking on more leadership is not going to serve the organization actually it, it might hurt the organization so for me it's taking all those considerations um and, and deciding whether leadership is for you in this moment. And if it's not, that's okay. You can still be extremely effective and serve an organization you love, even if you're not um, on, on the executive leadership. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Cause some, I know sometimes folks can feel pressured if they're in the group and they're like, oh, we want you to do this cause you're so great. And you're like, I know, but capacity, know yourself. <laughs> right. Because sometimes you have the capacity to say, no, thank you at this moment. But also sometimes, you know, as Tamara said, sometimes you need to push yourself to do some of those not so glamorous parts of the job. And now we're getting to the real meat, the question everybody wants to know. The cultural artists, how can they join a local nonprofit board? How can I can share the way um, it's happened for me um, because I think this is a pretty common way of getting involved. I was invited by an organization that I frequented seeing work at this theater. This is Counterpulse Theater. Mm -hmm. um, I was there all the time seeing their shows. I really believed in the mission of the, the organization and the shows that they were doing. And it, Jessica Robinson Love was the uh, ED at the time and had an idea to do a program it was just a vision performing diaspora and invited me to co-curate. So sometimes getting involved with an organization, not the board yet, but just something that that organization is doing that's out in community and really showing up and being present for that um, is a way to learn more about the organization and for them to get to know you. So having that opportunity to co-curate Performing Diaspora with Sherwood Chin, Roko Kawai, Jessica Robinson Love, I really had a firsthand opportunity to see how the organization works. And then I was invited to serve on the board. So that was that uh, sort of pathway. So I would say, get involved. If you know that you already believe in what an organization is doing, you love their work in community. Sometimes they also will do a call too. They're looking for people. Um, that happens too. And I'll uh, leave the floor now to uh, Nadia Tamar, who might want to add to that. Um, you know, I think I would ask, I had mentors. I was like 23 and my mentors were like, you're going to serve on this board. And I said, okay, I didn't know what a board was, but you know, let's get into it. We did it. Right. So I would start with your mentors. Right. And I also would ask your mentors that are older than you and younger than you. Right. Because people that are younger than you are plugged into different groups. And there may be groups that don't necessarily have a board, but maybe have like a structure and you, you want to get, you want to support and you're part of that community maybe. So I always start with your mentors and your friends. If you have a friend that's working for a nonprofit arts organization, um, having a conversation I think is is really good. Um, just to, to I, I would say, okay, oh, here's the other point I wanted to make. I think it is important to have some contrast. So yes, serve on arts organizations boards and also consider serving on boards for entities that are kind of different or very different because it'll offer you some contrast. Um, mm. And you also will be a contrast, right? Like what you bring to the table and your perspective and all the things we already talked about is going to be really valuable there. Not that it wouldn't be in an arts organization, but I guess what I'm saying is I've served on some boards that are not arts and it's harder, right? For me, I was like, oh, okay, this is not like, oh yeah, I know all about this. 
Um, but I was able to meet people that I normally would never meet who have impacted my life and my career in the arts in ways that I couldn't have imagined. There's so many options. And as Laura said, it's it's figuring where you can get in, where you fit in. And as Tamara said, you know, sometimes you have to go outside to to be that representative, you know, once you have some experience or if you're looking for some experience. And these are all pleasant. And also, you have to ask, you know, you have to ask around sometimes. Like, how do I, how do I get in? And you, and as you know, Laura was saying, you have to show up. You have to figure out who or what type of organizations really make you feel passionate. What are you passionate about? Do you, are you, you know, really in love with their mission? Are you subscribing to what they're subscribing to? Is it cultural? Is it gender specific? Is it et cetera, et cetera? What about this organization Organization is speaking to you as an individual and that you want to tell people? If you find yourself telling people about this organization, like, ooh, I went to so and so show, they always have a good show. So and so's always dance, they always got new ideas, and ooh, and they had this choreography. That's where you need to be involved in some capacity. And that's where you get in. You want to stay after the show and talk to the choreographer. Talk to the dancers, talk to other audience members. How'd y'all enjoy that? You know, you have that you really have to be involved in kind of putting yourself out there. I know that's hard for some of us introverts, self-included, but you have to be brave. And sometimes you might just stay out and just and it doesn't have to be a long conversation either, just to the choreographer. Really enjoyed this evening. Thank you so much. And then you can send them an email from your safe home <laughs> away from the people. You can send them an email. You can follow them on social media. You can repost, you can comment, you can tell others about them. That's how you get involved. And that's how they start seeing that you are supporting them. There's also um, board matches that. Um, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So that's another like resource for finding out um, about like to Tamara's point, different types of nonprofits um, will be at these um, events that are looking to match organizations with people who want to serve. Yes, absolutely. And would you all be able to speak about any professional programs that you think would prepare cultural artists to enter these boards? I, I don't know if they're specific to board professional development, but there's a lot of um, sort of through like APAP and like the Emerging Leaders um, Institute. And I know, I think there's another organization. I can't remember which. I'm sorry, for those who may not know what APAP is. Uh, Association of Performing Arts Professionals. I always yeah. say it. That's, it. <laughs> That's it. That's <laughs> it. I passed. Okay. Um, but yeah, but there, and I, I, I'll, I would, I can totally send um, some resources to Andrea and uh, and just so, because there's a lot of these um, free or like subsidized uh, professional development programs, and you end up meeting a lot of people who are yeah. mission aligned through those programs. And like Tamara was saying, like that network is sort of what exposes you to like different organizations and their missions and mentors who drag you into different things. Um, that's <laughs> critical for me. So um, yeah, I think that's one. I mean, this is a great opportunity as well. There's an there's another one in the Midwest and I can't remember it. Anyway, NPN, did NPN have something? No. I mean, the convening, right, of all the partners and artists. Mm -hmm. um, there is in the in the South Bay, um, housed out of the School of Arts and Culture at the Mexican Heritage Plaza, is the Multicultural Arts Leadership Institute, the MOLLE program. Um, and so that's now in its, I don't know, 15th year of existence, something like that. It's not focused on board development, but that's a part of it. It's like a portion of it. Then there's I think, the Hispanic Foundation, Silicon Valley. They do they do a specific board development program that's old, it's like a cohort. They take you through like several weeks program, and then they do like a board match. So in your community, they there might be something like that through your community foundation. Just asking around, but yeah. All the panelists will send me the things that the resources that they're mentioning, and I will send them out post this event in mm -hmm. a very specific email. <laughs> Yes. 
And so as we just kind of uh, bring this conversation to a close, what are just some last takeaways that you would want the attendees to know about nonprofit boards, uh, your experience as cultural artists, as women of color, some final thoughts and takeaways about what they can bring to this specific pathway? I'll just say what um, what has been wonderful for me for, I don't know, I guess the first time I joined the board was 2010, and I've been serving on board since 2010. Um, the professional development, I think Nadi talked about that, like how I've been able to to grow um, as um, as a arts leader, um, creative thinker, like I already brought those skills, but just I've been able to broaden those with um, the problem solving, um, having the challenges that sometimes um, will come about, like chairing, like having to do a, a executive director search, for instance, com- incredibly challenging. Um, having to um, understand the value of being a great listener and being someone who can take their time with decision-making when it needs to happen and being quick with the decision when that needs to happen. Just those that the skill sets that you develop. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that has been really valuable to me. Um, What I've been told I've brought over and over again is just, uh, I think both Tamara and and Nadi mentioned this, um, that perspective, that artist lens, that point of view, um, that ability to really um, say what we think, um, no holds bar, um, mm-hmm. the fearlessness, the courage. Um, artists are courageous people. And in a boardroom, that can actually be very helpful. Um, the other thing I want to say is I've been really fortunate to serve on boards where this becomes a really um, famil- uh, a family Um I know as chair, I really worked at, it was modeled for me. So I actually continue the legacy of um, finding ways to keep morale up in challenging times, um, as well as making sure that people who are coming in new and folks who have been there for a while begin to really know each other. We have board retreats and things like this that really bring um, that community together so that we can serve as a body the best way we can. Yes. And I was going to say, and if you're arts leader, if you are in an organization or you lead an arts organization, you have those qualities as well that you're bringing to the, the boardroom. Yes. Final thoughts, Nadi. Um, plus one to a lot of what Laura said. Um, and I, I think I'm trying to like find three points that maybe succinctly say what I want to say. Um, I think for me, it's been about, um, actually becoming empowered, like on a board, like before um, I joined, I was an artist and like, is my opinion important? I don't know how I got here, but then you realize like how much it's needed and you become more confident in saying what you think and realizing that what you say and think like has value and can move things around. So uh, that that empowerment has been really important to me. Um, exposure to different not your own exposure as artists. We don't want that. We don't need exposure. That's nothing. Okay. But like uh, exposure to different kinds of people, thoughts, like fields, like the fact that I'm an artist and I'm talking to programmers and curators and learning about how they do things, how how agents think about things, like what are their priorities in a conference or in a meeting or in a gathering space. So it's like getting those um, like exposure to different different people and different even different kinds of artists, like even Barry is so diverse. And yet still, we're not always in community with each other so closely. So that's been really valuable to me. And then, um, and then examples, like examples of how to be a good leader, uh, examples of how to come to a consensus, um, examples of mentors, how to mentor, like, you know, I mean, this is, um, all of that has been really important to me and is why I continue to serve, actually, Um, aside from the obvious things like the vision of the organization that's this is the organization i want to be with i've benefited a lot before i was on the board i was on the board but like these three e's like empowerment examples and exposure (laughs) those are my takeaways awesome give it to us tamra (laughs) happy to um 
Well, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, being in different communities, Mm -hmm. being on boards, both locally, regionally, and nationally has, um, especially, you know, you don't always have the budget to like visit different parts of your own country that you're in. Um, So I'm just going to say, you know, if you're, if you're serving on a board locally, you might be like, well, I've never been to that part of that county of this county. Right. And I have a board meeting out there. I have a program. So I have like a community that's going to like see, you know, receive me. Uh, I'm not a stranger or like my, my example with the national performance network, I went to places that I would never go. Like I've been to Cedar Rapids a couple times. Right. But also I've been to Chicago. Okay. Like I, I'm, I'm a first generation kid. My parents are from Mexico. I, I was everywhere I've ever been through these boards. I'm astounded. I'm just like, wow. And these are places that are taking care of business, right? As an artist, they're paying my way. They're taking care of me. So that's the other piece there with these boards where it's like understanding. I will get to the money question. I saw that. So I think exposure, like literal, like you're going to different places you normally wouldn't go. And then you're also building a community that's going to back you up. So you're in this board, you're doing your things and you're building relationships and you are, you don't know, one day you might need to call upon them for some sort of issue that you need support with, and they've seen you in the boardroom and you've seen them and you know that you can count on them. I'm not saying everyone, but you know that you're like, I can call Christian, I can call Taniqua. Okay, I can call Mark, all right. And you have your people, they're not at your job and they're not your family, they're somewhere else. Yes, I love that. Thank you all so much for those kind of final takeaways. We do have two questions that we're going to address right now. The first one, what are best practices that you all panelists have used or seen to create goals and a focus for the board of a community-based arts organization? Ooh, that's a long one. Okay. Best practices. (laughs) Well, there's actually goal setting that uh, boards should do. Um, at the beginning of a fiscal year. Um, There's goal setting that we actually do as a body. And you also do that as an individual board member. So um, there's, and then in um, Midway, we um, will often do reflection too. So you have reflection, what what have you accomplished? So you have your goal setting. And then as you get um, towards, not right at the end of the fiscal year, but before you get there, what goals have you met? What still needs to happen? So that's one thing. And then of course, there's the the broader idea of strategic planning, but just for goal setting um, year to year, um, that's a practice that is really helpful for the individual board member, as well as the board as a body. Mm-hmm. Tamara Nadi, anything to add to that? Laura, I was going to say, it can be quite simple too, if it's a small board mm-hmm. and a small organization, like um, what are the goals? I mean, I've done it in different ways through bigger organizations and then our own smaller one. It's like, you, you can have three goals. It doesn't have to be a strategic plan necessarily yet, um, but like all of it is important. All of that is what makes that forms a vision of a nonprofit, small or big, you know? Yes. Fantastic. Next question, Uh, I forgot who posed this, but they say, what I've always heard about nonprofit boards is that to be a member, you either have to bring your money to the table or find money for the organization. Do you think this is true? You know, it depends. It really depends on the organization. So let's say you're part of of, uh, the Essex Dance community and you really love a group, you wanna support them. You know, in in our community, most of our groups are not 501c3s. Um, So there's plenty of ways to support. You can support with you show up and you've got a plate of fruit and that's what you're going to give. Now, when you're getting into the more formal 501c3, um, it really depends on the organization. And I think when you're interested in organization, to let them know, this is what I can bring to the table. And also, no dollar is too small. So if you go to somebody and you're like, I can give $50 a quarter or $50 a year, and they're like, no, thank you, ma'am. Really? Like, move on. 
right? Because you should be able to negotiate that. I was the executive director of the Mexican Heritage Plaza. I had a board. I had artists on the board because it was a cultural space, very important. I remember we had a few artists and saying, you know, working with them on, yes, we do want this board to raise money and to give money, give, give something that's meaningful to you. That's what, that's what our language was around that. And then also as artists, we said, time is one of the most valuable things that we have. So we requested from artists, can you identify what sort of time commitment, what sort of time, uh, let me give you an example. I had a funder that was coming into town and I needed one of my artists to be there you know, with me. Um, and I said, can you do this? This is, this is uh, something that we really need. Can you show up or would this feel extractive to you? And they said, no, because I know that I'm giving of my time and that time is money. So we had a very clear conversation. I'm like, if this is extractive, no. So I'm saying upfront, negotiate that. Mm. And when you are invited to a board or uh, you will be given an onboarding packet, and in that packet, they will very clearly outline what the expectations are um, around service. And different organizations have different bylaws and ways that they're structured. So you could have um, an organization that asks for a minimum of a dollar amount for the year of service for each board member, because that becomes part of their financial goal setting. Mm -hmm. And you have um, often foundations that are looking at the input from the board around money as well as community. Um, and then you may have um, an organization that really just needs a working board to Tamara's point. They want people who can give time and skills and their own, um, um, uh, what's the word I'm, specialty, right? Like they mm -hmm. specialize in particular areas and that's really helpful to the organization. Um, and you could have a mix where you have an organization that wants to have some time and they want to have some money. <laughs> um, but then they'll also say you can um, pay out of, or you can find that money. So you can go out and do like a match with your corporation if you work for a corporation or you can have people donate. You can so you can give or get to to reach that financial commitment. Um, and to Tamara's point, you just want to know that when they give you that packet and they're telling you what it is um, they expect from you, there's this is what I'm able to do. And the negotiation is always, always um, available, should be available to you. So I'm just echoing that and saying, absolutely. You see that that um, financial commitment, it's not something you can do, but you really want to serve, you should be able to negotiate. So I absolutely agree. Yes. And I think that kind of answers the question that uh, someone had in the chat about, in the chat about specific skills. Yes, yeah, specific specific specialties that you're bringing that you're adding on to this organization. And that's again why it's great to go to those board match events so you can talk to the people and ask what their expectations are. And I could also say in your network, connect mm -hmm. networking is another is another benefit that's been missing, uh, mentioned, but also who do you know in, commi in community that can expand that organization's reach? Yes. Okay. This may be the last question. Any advice on board member recruitment when your nonprofit is relatively small and specialized, especially when many of its members have already served and want to break oh, or have no further interest? And that's okay. Can you ask that one more time? Any advice on board member recruitment when your nonprofit is relatively small and specialized so that current members can take a break or rotate off? Yeah, well, the people who are ready to rotate off should be uh, the core folks to help with recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, because often like attracts like. So if there's someone that has been working well for your organization, if it's time for them to rotate off. And hopefully your bylaws have that within the bylaws. That's something to work on if you don't, that you should have terms of service in the bylaws. 
because that really helps to keep boards fresh. It also helps you to not wear out the folks on your board if they have a way to gracefully step down from board service. And recruitment should be part of that conversation. And um, and recruitment should be something, if you can, even as a smaller board, be thinking about folks who are showing up to your events, people who you see coming all the time, people who are giving your, your individual donors. These are folks who clearly have uh, interest than just a one-off in what it is you're doing. And they could perhaps um, be great members of your board. I was going to say the same thing. It's the people right there that's invested in, in you or your company, you're they're either already giving, as you said, or they're showing up each time. Or the people who are always repo reposting Anytime you post something new that you're doing, those folks who are reposting, putting their stories, or they're always the first to comment. And really what you do is you say that I see you coming all the time or I see you showing up. I love, you know, the way you show up. Can we have coffee? Mm -hmm. So you don't say right there and they're like, do you want to join our board? Like that can be a little <laughs> funny. Yeah. <laughs> so can we go out for coffee? I, I want to tell you some ideas I've had. Right. And in, in, in what you're inspiring me or how you how, how you are inspiring me and what I see. And it can really be a cultivating thing that that happens and ramps up to the invite. I would just quickly add um, that it's OK to call things what they are. Um, if you have a group right now that's uh, tired and you have a lot of people that want to kind of cycle off and all that, it's OK to acknowledge that it may feel a little uncomfortable to say, I know that. You know, I've heard from many of you that you're you're a bit tired, looking to maybe cycle off and what have you. And it, this is where managing the board members one by one and having individual conversations with them, having a game plan around how that happens so that it's it's a staggered out, so that it's a process um, over time and to really negotiate with them to say, I need you on for another six months. Um, I need you on for another three months and kind of looking at your your chart. Like looking at like who's got the most tenure and can you move on to a committee? You know, I'm I, I obviously I'm talking about a an, an organization I know nothing of, <laughs> just grabbing from the chat. Um, but I think that people are relieved often, and here's where we come in as artists, right? We come in, we're speaking truth through our dance, through our visual arts, through our expression, right? It's always truth. And so I think saying to that person, you know, friend. I know you want to cycle off um, and I need you for another six months and I need you to hold this position in this. Like you always bring insight into these conversations about finances. I'm making this up. And, you know, I'm just going to release you from the other things. I still need you to show up, but I need you to come in. And it, you know what I mean? It's, I don't want to use a word. It's not, it's relationship management, right? Um, mm -hmm. Anyways. Yeah, we get tired. We get tired. They get tired. And that's okay. And like Tamara said, okay. it's about having a conversation about making that transition smooth. All right. I believe that was our last question in the chat. Oh, you all are so wonderful with these very poignant and insightful questions. I'm glad we could answer them all. Yes, past board, yes, past board members are also amazing supporters in other ways. And they can all you can also challenge them to do some recruitment as well. They become great donors later, um, advisory board members. Sometimes you can have um, a structure where if you um, don't already have an advisory board, sometimes there's just, uh, I think Tamara said, that someone you can just call up because that skill set is still needed and maybe you haven't replaced that skill set completely, right? Or um, they can often be um, connected to your new board members, they can mentor, which I think someone mentioned. Yes. Oh, Shreba, you just joined a nonprofit. Yay. Wonderful. I would love to hear about your experience later. So reach out to me, Shreba. Tell me what happened. <laughs> Wonderful. And so it's been a great chat, 
a great discussion. Great to hear some wonderful insight from these fantastic, awesome women making a way <laughs> through and in and reaching back and bringing folks along. So glad to have had this conversation. I thank all of you for joining us. World Arts West is a nonprofit <laughs> service organization. And that means that we operate through grants, through donors. And if you would like to be a donor and to help us keep programs like this going, you can visit our website, worldartswest.org and click the button for donate. Uh, there's also a link that's going to be in the chat in just a second. Uh, but we always ask that if you cannot donate monetarily, you can volunteer. Email us. We're very friendly. Other staff are here in the chat. Noelle's in here. Cora's in here. You can reach out to me as well, Andrea, at worldartswest.org. If there are other ways that you would like to contribute your time and capacity for the edification of supporting cultural artists. And also for those who don't know, we not only have this program, but we have our annual dance festival. And that's going to be coming this fall. More information to come. So if you're not on our newsletter, make sure you sign up to our newsletter. Make sure you're following us on all of our social media at World Arts West. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. Noelle's on top of our Facebook and socials, okay? Instagram is popping over there. So y'all give a snap to Noelle <laughs> in the comments. Yes. So we thank you all for joining us this evening. This has been recorded and it will be up on our YouTube page. And again, it'll be in the newsletter. So make sure you sign up. Make sure you're following us on social media so you can know when it's up on full on our YouTube page. So you can share with someone who couldn't make it today because we are starting to keep these conversations as resources for the community. So you can come back and see what happens so you can hear from these experts, grab those resources and continue to make your pathway in this arts world. Thank you all so much for being here. Have a good night.